Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is Auto Jeff Reviews. Today we're gonna look at the new 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. This is exciting for me. Now you may ask yourself, why is this exciting? Well, it's exciting. I do a lot of car reviews, but Nissan Pathfinder, people were starting to wonder, would it ever be redesigned? It's sort of like Hootie and the Blowfish used to say, time why you punish me, right? Look at this, it's all new. This is in scarlet ember color, and this is the SL trim level. The thing I should tell you is there are four different trim levels. There's the S, SV, SL, and Platinum. So this is second from the top. You'll see what I mean, it's got a premium package too. I'm told these vehicles are very hard to find right now, the all new redesign. It's always hard to find a redesign when it first launches, right? This one's at Fred Anderson Toyota pre-owned car department in Raleigh, North Carolina. You can check their website at fredandersontoyota.com. Thanks so much for letting me use this one. So let's lay it out for you. I'm gonna give you a first look at the interior because I'm gonna show the exterior. I just want you to know what you're looking at with this new interior. Beautiful leather seats. The seats are really comfortable. I like the drive, especially with the new nine-speed automatic transmission. We're gonna look at the back seat now. You can get bench or you can get these captain's chairs with the center console. Look at that. So we're gonna do exterior, then interior, then I'll tell you what I think about it on the road or off the road. First of all, let's pretend we're at an auto show because we're looking at this 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. All new exterior styling, new wheel designs. That is sharp, especially with that two-tone gloss roof. I like that. You'll see lots of badging that's gonna tell people from all angles, hey yo, this is a Pathfinder and this is dirty. Let's take a look at the front end first of all, and you're gonna see kind of a combination of modern, beautiful styling really with the combination of the glossy black horizontal slats along with the chrome accents and these daytime running lights, LED, headlights, LED, fog lights, very small, very down low, LEDs, parking sensor. So it's kind of a combination of modern, but it's also got hearkening back to the good old days of the rugged, tough Pathfinder with those horizontal slats, right? And look at this beautiful, beautiful modern Nissan displayed prominently like a Phoenix, right? And as we go across, just think, Nissan engineers restyled this, redesigned, retooled, did it do enough to hit the year 2022? Look at this. I love this little swoosh right here. It's sweeping in across. That looks cool. That looks aggressive. Looks like it's ready to race. Go grease lightning, you're burning up the quarter mile. Grease lightning. Okay, maybe not grease lightning, but this thing's got some chops to it. It's a 3.5 liter V6 engine. 284 horsepower and 259 foot-pounds of torque. It's matched with an all-new nine-speed automatic transmission, which replaces the continuous variable transmission, CVT. So what does that really mean for people driving it though? Those are just numbers. Well, to me, I found when I pushed on the accelerator pretty heavy, it flew. That was going up a hill. Just on normal city streets, it's smooth. It even feels smooth, like abnormally smooth, I thought, driving down the road. And I thought, I really didn't feel the shift points. There are nine of them. I really didn't feel it shift all that much. That would be annoying. Sometimes with multiple speed, like a 10 speed automatic transmission, sometimes you could feel But really, it's smooth. And it feels aggressive when it needs to be, but otherwise it just kind of settles right down and it's a midsize SUV comfortable for road trips or commuting or dropping kids off at carpool, that kind of stuff. A couple other observations. I do like the soundproofing material here. I'm always a fan of hydraulic lifts. It's got a prop rod, but a lot of vehicles still do. Me, I just rather have the hood safely, smoothly, comfortably raise up, but it's not bad. Scarlet Ember. Now, what are some observations here? On the SL trim level, normally it comes with 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels. These ones here, these are gonna go up to 20 inch because it has the premium package and it has 255 50R20 all season tires to go along with it. You can see the matte blackish gray, we'll call it, 
over fenders here. Fuel doors on the driver's side. I believe it's 21 MPG in the city, 26 on the highway, which is kind of right up in there with the middle SUV class. And this has smart key auto unlock on both the driver and the passenger front and rear doors. Another nice touch I like, <laughs> if I could open it, the second row sunshades block out the sun for the kids. And of course it has two tone, the roof rack matches, nice chrome accents here, prestige and luxury, right? It's got turn signal indicator, gloss black mirror cover, and then blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert as well. How does this look to you all? Let's talk about towing, your boats, your trailers, your campers, your off-roading ATV type toys, right? Well, because of the premium package, it has the tow hitch and the harnesses, 6,000 pound towing capacity. This is dirty because that's where you're supposed to take it. I'm taking it to the park, yo. All right, it's got parking sensors on the back with this nice silver metallic accented. And then this is modern right here, this Pathfinder logo. That's like a modern typeface here along with the brand new Nissan logo. That's cool stuff. The cargo space behind the third row has 16.6 .6 cubic feet of space. Just a little bit more than the current Toyota Highlander, but watch how fast this opens up. It's crazy. It's got my camera bag, some floor mats, and my drink bottle in there. It's fast, right? It's fast. Let me time it. Faster than me. That's how I time things. Faster or slower than me. So how does this really work? Dimensions for cargo capacity are a little bit tweaked based on if you have a moonroof or no moonroof. This one has a moonroof. So when I said 16.6 .6 cubic feet, I meant without a moonroof. This one has it, so we're going down to 16, which makes it even with Toyota Highlander. Now, if you put these headrests down and fold these seats, then you get 47 cubic feet of storage space, right? And then with these seats folded down, you have 78.9 cubic feet of storage space. So it really opens up the possibilities of what you can do with these seats down. Speaking of seats, I'm only five foot eight, so I don't know if I'm the best judge on if something's comfortable in the back, but there's good headroom here, okay? You can recline these seats forward or backward, set up headrests or no headrests. The seats are very comfortable. It fits three across, it does. Not the biggest. This is decent size though. Very comfortable, I'm impressed. And as far as my personal leg room, this seat is way far forward, but it is set for somebody who's five foot eight. So there's a good amount of room here. Let's cut across. I like the pockets here. I love the temperature control. And then you can also cut off temperature so that only the front seat passengers can control the temperature. That way, if you got a little kid, you can do that. Two different ways to connect USB wise. Now, how am I gonna get to that third row? Well, let's see if I can find that. How about that? Do we want slow-mo? Let's look inside. Like Led Zeppelin, in through the outdoor, right? This is kind of a combination of black seats, gray accents with light gray accent stitching. It's got power lumbar support. All right, take a look. How do you like the styling? There's always that time where you make your judgments when a car first gets redesigned. Do you like the interior? Do you like the choices they made? Were they aggressive enough with their changes? Did they modernize? Is it easy to use? Does it need fuel? <laughs> Nine inch touchscreen right here. Very modernized compared to the previous generation. Let's dig deeper. In the midsize SUV crossover market, you wanna make sure that you've got visibility. It's a nice big windshield here. It expands pretty deep and the front end seems pretty far from where you're sitting and actually I had to take a little getting used to to be able to judge the front of my car. Luckily with the all around view with the new camera angles that was easy to do. 
Now visibility. Nice big windows. Squared off windows here. A little bit of a cutout here. And then you really want to obviously put the headrest down if somebody's not sitting there. So there's your viewpoint out the back. With ergonomics, I find the seat has good padding. It wraps around, but it's not too tight like you'd be seeing in a sports car. Of course, you can recline the power driver's seat with lumbar support. It has a four-way power passenger seat, so you can go forward and backward, and you can recline your seat as well. All right, so it goes pretty far back. I like the steering wheel. It's more on the side of sporty. It's smooth, it's not grippy. I love that new logo, that new Nissan logo. Very cool here. Take a look at the gauge clusters here. There's good room right here in the center that you can kind of tweak it based on which filing cabinet of information you're looking for. And then we'll go back again. If you want to have on the steering assist, you'll push this one. It says it's off, but you do need to have the cruise control on to be able to have your steering assist active. Let's look at this multimedia screen because that is a cornerstone of every vehicle's interior, whether it's modernized or whether it's set back a little bit. You can adjust things like you have Sirius XM, Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. I said it, wireless Apple CarPlay, and you can change between day and night views. I like that because you get to control if you want that or not. And then our menu, you can scroll across to get, I love that, or you can push. And see that I can get my five day forecast. I can get hourly, can get current. Now, if you want more visibility, easier backing up, easier going forward, easier overhead views, look for the intelligent around view assist. I'll show you what that is. So let's try pushing camera and see what happens here. All right, so we got in front of us, we got overhead views with our guidelines a side view, very cool, right? And then we can go back again. Now I'm gonna put it into reverse and then you can see behind you to make sure the coast is clear, yo. Some other things you might wanna see, heated seats, but it has tri-zone temperature controls. So you can control passenger, driver, front. You can also set up the rear and the rear control so now I get to control from here what I want the rear temperature to be. So of course that's kind of cool. And then we've got different USB hookups right here. And then we've got our 12 volt circular port which every car seems to have. And then wireless charging has been added with the upgraded package as well so that you can put your smartphone. It's a nice wide area. Um, I think this is a good spot to put your cell phone. Not that you would, but you could, right? So what do we got here? We've got our different driving modes. I'm going to show you what that is. Watch this. We've got snow, eco, standard, sport, tow. Now let's take a look at how you shift. P, pretty easy. Just push it. Drive, you can go down here. You can also do sequential mode as well with another click. Now watch this. If I go forward one more, that's neutral. Push in and go up, that's reverse. And I'm going to show you how that works now. We're going to do our clicks. Push the button for P. Pull down for drive. Pull one more, sequential shift. Go up one, neutral. Push forward, reverse. Question for you. What did the car enthusiast apostrophe say to the hyphen? Hey baby, I love the look of your dash. Well, I love the look of this dash as well. It's beautiful, right? It's gorgeous. It's got a nice deep 
storage pocket here good for phones maybe wallets any other things that you could think in here plenty of cup holders lots of good storage space nooks and crannies we'll call it and then inside the console it's not hard it's not soft but it does open holla does not have any plugins but it's got two different parts maybe put change up here or something you don't want rolling around and then a pretty deep storage that's good for lots of things i would think maybe a little grogu doll from mandalorian and then up top we've got lighted mirrors with sliders so we can block out the sun and then we've got our pano roof controls That way it goes all the way back. And how far does the glass open? Everyone wants to know that, right? Okay. It's about a 60-40 split, I'd say, between the front glass that opens and the back glass that exposes light to the back seats. As far as pricing, a 2022 Nissan Pathfinder SL model, that starts at about 39,500, front wheel drive. If you get the four wheel drive, that goes up to around 41,500, right in that range, give or take a few dollars here and there. If you're playing Monopoly, maybe some whites, some pinks, some yellows. Okay, there you go. You can see our camera system here. Overhead view tells me what's nearby. What a beautiful day. Now for me, the graphics, they're bright and they're bold. They don't seem crystal clear, like right here, the 90s on nine symbol. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't look modern and crisp. I've got it in sport mode, so we're on gravel. Might be a little rocky, get it, rocky. The wheel feels tighter. The handling is great. And I don't expect everybody's going to be taking it on gravel roads all the time, but it's nice to know what you're looking at when you do. The road noise isn't bad at all. Let's move it down to standard mode and see if we notice any difference. A little bit looser steering wheel, I think, and then the handling loosens up just a little bit more free flowing, like easy, easy like Sunday morning. I really want to sing that bad, but I'm not going to do it. You know what? I just took that speed bump and that was really soft. That's known for being a speed bump that's really going to rattle people's spines and give them a, what was that? If you go too fast, that was really nice, really good suspension. Let's test it around this turn here. It's kind of an S curve which you'll find a lot in the country or the mountains. Oh yeah, that's very smooth. This car drives nice. It's like I said, it's smooth and I don't want to say that too many times, but that's my impression of it. You really should test this for yourself. Let's test out the acceleration right after this speed bump. That's going to be hard as you know what. Okay. 284 horsepower there. So you do hear the roar of the engine as it's accelerating, but at your cruising speed, it's really quiet. This is nice. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this one. I like the readout. I like that everything's close by. I imagine you could get it just as easy from the passenger side, but everything's easy. It's right there. You don't have to stretch to get any information out, that kind of stuff. And then the readout here on the information display. I like it. It's kind of a combination of traditional with modern. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you liked the video. This specific one is in Raleigh, North Carolina at Fred Anderson Toyota pre-owned department. You can check them out at fredandersontoyota.com. Thank you so much. If you want me to review a vehicle in the Raleigh area, 
just let me know. You can send me an email at autojeffreviews at gmail.com. And you can go to autojeff.com. You can also go to Auto Jeff Reviews on Instagram. Lots of ways to reach me. Thanks everybody so much. Leave a comment to say hi. What's the weather like where you are? It's getting a little bit chillier these days here in Raleigh, but it still feels great. All right, leave a comment with the type of vehicle you want me to review next. Somebody actually wanted me to review the Pathfinder and luckily it was available, so we got you done. Thanks everybody so much. Please hit subscribe to follow my channel. I try to do thorough reviews, fun reviews. We can review cars and have fun too, right? All righty guys. See you next time.